Hey, how's it going? This is Kevin from Audio Digital. I strained my shoulder, that's what this thing is. So don't worry about that. But what we're here to do is to go over some advanced grid techniques that you can use in your projects. What I'm going to go over today is how I made the patch randomizer. I have a link for the, the video I made about that and you can get this patch for free if you're a Patreon. And uh, but I'm going to walk through how to build it right here in this video. So and don't worry about that. You can see all the, the tricks and techniques and you should be able to use these things for other uses as well. So let's get into that. No more delay. All right. Here we are in the grid and here is this randomizer patch. And right here I have the the output of this wavetable. Now what we're doing here is we're taking this wavetable oscillator and we are having generate some some noise and we're kind of modifying that noise in a couple of different ways and we're actually sampling a certain portion of this whole wavetable at a particular time and that's what the output looks like it looks just like this then what we're doing is we're sampling these little plateaus here and getting a value from that and then taking that value and sending it into the modulators. And then those modulators are modulating your pre your your synthesizer or whatever you have them hooked up to. So this is where the data is coming from. So because we're getting the data from this wavetable, we have 256 different frames or index uh, parts that we can sample from. And we're also sampling only about a quarter of each frame for every preset that we're kind of accessing. So if you didn't see the other video, basically when I dial in these three knobs here, I can get a different preset that is basically random. And as you can see here, as I turn this to each specific setting, we're getting a different set of results in the oscilloscope there. And uh, here you can see that as I'm turning these guys, this is the ones place, so I'm only affecting the ones place when I turn that one. This is the tens place, so there's the tens place being changed, and the hundreds place. So I can go from zero, zero, zero to, of course, nine hundred and ninety-nine. Nice stuff. Now, how about this fine tune here? When I change that, look at what happens. Fun stuff. Okay, and when I do the weighted, let's look at what that does. Pushes things more towards positive or negative, and that's why this one is a little bit more predictable than this one. Okay, so that's just a basic recap of what this guy does, but how does it do it? Now, uh, there's a couple of different uh, techniques here. There's gonna be three things that I go over that you can dissect and use in a bunch of different ways. The first one is this whole channeling system. Now again, what we're doing here is we're taking one signal that's repeating and we're repeating that signal 100 times every second, which is not the most important part of it. It could be 10 times a second. It could be maybe a thousand. At a certain point, if you do it too fast, things can get a little unstable, but um, this works really well at 100 times per second and uh, there's really no problem with that particular frequency. And what we're doing here is we're taking um, these step devices and using them as kind of a channeling system. So to explain that better, let's go to a different grid where we can isolate what we're, we have going on here. So this is a simplified version. And what I'm doing, instead of using the noise oscillator, I just have myself here a, um, a step generator. And this is taking the place of that noise wavetable. And this allows us to do some interesting things as well. So you might want to use it, this technique, using one of these steps as a controller. So what happens here is I have this phaser is being used as a clock. It's a common clock for this kind of one I'm using as a controller and these other ones here. So the signal is going into here and driving these. If you're doing this, remember to turn this thing off or you'll, you'll have problems. This is, has its own clock to it. So we don't, want our, we don't want more than one clock running at the same time. We want one clock to rule them all. 
And then we're taking uh, these and we're turning up one of the multiple steps and turning it all the way up to one. And then we're feeding the output of this into the sample and hold into the uh, switch here. And so that means it's going to sample at one particular time. And then we're running the output of this into the input of the sample and hold. And then that sample and hold is going to give us an output. So when we put all that together, basically, here is a oscilloscope connected to this particular channel. And when I change the value of channel one, channel one changes. When I change the value of channel two, channel two changes and so on. And I can kind of draw a particular curve or whatever and set multiple channels at once. So that is really cool if we're doing something like an additive synthesizer. There's a lot of different uses for this sort of technique. Um, but in any case, it lets you set up a bunch of values at once or change one thing and, and not the others and so forth, right? So again, we're using this in the preset to give us a whole bunch of randomized um, outputs so we can modulate things. But yeah, obviously you can use it for a bunch of different stuff. <clears throat> So yeah, I hope that's clear how that works. This is a simplified version. In the actual preset here, I added a few things um, to make it run smoothly. This is a really high resolution um, and high frequency sample here. So I quantized the stepping through of the, the wavetable here, um, and it, like the scanning of the wavetable. As you can see, I turned off the internal clock and I'm driving it just by using phase modulation. And so I'm quantizing the, the clock signal so that that's why we're getting these flat points here at different uh, intervals. And that just makes it easier to sample and we don't get you know, we, we're not sampling at the transition points or anything, so it stays super stable. And I, I'm also delaying the clocks of of the uh, the channeling a little bit, so that we're well within the the center of these plateaus when we're sampling, uh, and we don't have to worry about kind of sampling too early or too late or whatever. So it just it was just a lot more stable to do it that way. Um, but depending on the speed and what you are channeling, it, you may not need to, to take those extra steps. I just found that I needed to do that. So yeah, hopefully that explains how this whole channeling thing works. And of course, these steppers can have up to 64 different steps. So you could conceivably build a 64 channel um, system and uh, have a bunch of fun with that. Okay, so let's go over the next thing. All right, so the second thing I have to explain here is how I'm getting this sort of dial system where I can get each one of these to change a different number and how that actually corresponds to shifting this wavetable thing forward. It's actually um, pretty simple and straightforward. Let's go to another grid patch here to kind of break it down. So these are just regular old value knobs. Let's start this over a bit so we can see one thing at a time how it's working. The first thing that we need to do here is to set up some quantization so that each one of these has 10 discrete steps. And we really want it to be that this position is one of the steps at zero and then we want to go all the way up to nine. Okay, so right now the way it's set up, we're going up to one uh, and then we have discrete steps. We got uh, zero, one, and so forth all the way up to, to 10 basically. So that's too many. <laughs> we don't want that many steps. Um, and so what we have here is, if you're not familiar with how these quantizers work, you plug the input in here and then you get an output. And here we're like taking the output from all these and summing them and then looking at it here. So we can take um, the input and then we can slice the input into discrete kind of packets or discrete levels. 
using this input and this is going to be like uh, um, kind of dividing by. So if we put in here 0.1, then it'll slice it into 10 equal spaces. And so I could just kind of come here and get another one of these and, and, and set it to be, okay, 0.1. And uh, we could plug it into these guys like that. And then we can get those 10 discrete steps, no problem. Now there's a reason why I'm using the divide here. And I'll show you that in a second. So again, we want to plug this in and we want to be able to only go from zero to nine. So what I can do is actually plug in here 9.999. When I do that and press enter, it's going to say 10, but it's really still uh, 9.999. And now if I turn this up, it stops at nine. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. But we still have the problem of each one of these is adding the same amount. So we can't get like those. Basically, we turned all the way up. We'll get three or almost three. A little less. And if we turn it all the way down, we get zero. So that's not working out for us. So what we need to do is scale these things so that this is the smallest increment, this is next, and this is the highest. So we can take a couple of multiplies here and take a couple of constants. And we'll plug this one in and set it to 0 0.01. And we can take this one and set it to one. Plug it in, plug uh, the output of this one into here, the output of this one into here, then the output of this into here, and like that. Now let's see what we get. Dial this up. Aha, we're only affecting, obviously this is the thousandth place, but let's pretend it's the ones place. And we could actually make it be the ones place by just multiplying the output of this by um, a thousand, but there's no point in that. And there we go. So we can get zero to nine here. We can get zero to nine there and we can get zero to nine here. So peak is nine, nine, nine. And we can get any number in between zero and nine, nine, nine using these styles. So that's great. So, and then now the, the third thing is, well, okay, that's cool. But how are we going to let that output give us different sections of the wavetable. And that's where we use a little bit of what I call clockwork. And so let's look at this one again. And, uh, oh, sorry about that. Okay. And we're going to look at what we're going to do here. Just to recap, we're going to divide this up into 250 of the slices. And since we click this, we will always get a discrete slice and we'll never get an interpolation between two slices. And then we're going to divide it up into quarters. So we're going to scan one quarter here, one quarter here like that. So we multiply four times 250 and we get a thousand and that's where we're getting our thousand. But we need the number that we dial in to kind of progressively scan us through, like we can go this section from index one to index 126, but we're gonna skip a few along the way, if that makes sense. But basically, yeah, we wanna scan through once in this section, and then we wanna scan through again from, from one to 256, shift it over a bit, and then do it again shift it over a bit and then again. So then we're gonna get definitely discrete values for every frame, uh, for every uh, kind of preset, right? <clears throat> so what does our clock worker look like here? So we have these dials here. So we have a signal that can easily switch between anything from between 000 and 999. So that's all ready to go. So we can take the output of that and then run that through the clockwork. So what we have here is a scalar. So this is going to go from zero to basically 9.999, four times for one cycle. So for, for every one time we go from zero to 999 using these dials, it's gonna take us uh, from zero to 999 basically four times, okay? So that's how we're gonna keep scanning 
you know, we're, we're basically going to be here at zero. Let's do it. Let's go to zero. So we're here at zero, zero, zero. And we can see here we're at zero, zero, zero. And um, now I'm going to increase the value. Now we're at nine and we can see this is increasing a bit. And that's because the scalar here is connected to the index here. And it is going through its progression. So it's going to keep going and keep going. Let's look at where we're at. Uh, and now we're at there and let's let's turn this up to 200. So at 249, we've we've gone through all of the frames once. So let's look at what we get when we go to the next one. And now we're back down to zero. OK, and then if we go to uh, when yeah, you know, well, let's see, we're at 500 and we can see we're already into this next section here and so forth. And then we keep going and we start over again. So that works. It's pretty easy. It's just using the scalar done right now. How are we going to shift over what we're scanning so that we're getting a different part of these different frames that we're going to do by using a bias? Uh, this isn't labeled as bias because I renamed it. This is kind of track one through four. I, I named it, but the bias is under level and it is labeled. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I'm, I'm probably just not seeing it. Oh, yeah, here it is bias. So that basically just offsets the, um, the zero point of whatever is going through it. So we're what we did was we took the clock signal we quantize it and then we scaled it down. We divided it by a little less than a fourth. And there's a reason why we did that. So that it's basically, it used to be full scale and now it's kind of tiny like that. So it's just gonna scan here. And then when we um, bias it, it'll shift up and scan here and shift up and scan here. And as you can see, as we go through the different levels, we, go up through all the different possible bias levels. And we do that by quantizing the output of the same dial thing into four chunks so that it'll shift. It'll start out at double, start out at no bias. And then when it gets high enough, it'll be one quarter and then the next quarter and then the next. It never gets to the last one because we stop at 999 and we don't need to shift it because basically we're we're pushing it all the way up to the top there. Now the reason why it's a little bit smaller than a quarter is so that we have room to do the fine tuning without uh, crossing over into another uh, another section. So we, we never get the same values. We don't we don't even have the risk risk of getting the same values. Um, so that's how that works. Those three techniques, again, we have the channeling where we can split up one output into a couple of different signals. Um, then we have the kind of uh, selection where we can use three dials to select any value between one and a thousand. Pretty straightforward. And then we have the kind of clockwork idea where we're scanning through and different things are happening at different times so that we can control some process and have um, you know many different options as we're changing these sorts of values. So anyway, it's a little bit of a lot of stuff. Hopefully that, that tracks and makes sense. Um, I think I covered everything. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, if anything's not clear, you can just in the, uh, let me know in the comments. And if it if I skip something major, I can do another video for you guys. If you like this kind of content, this is a little bit more in-depth stuff. And sometimes I avoid trying to do this because I don't know really how many people are into it. So if you're into this, really let me know. Put in a comment, um, like the video, make sure you subscribe. And that'll help me know, hey, there's people who actually want some stuff that's a little bit more deep. And I know that's not everyone, but if you are one of those people, let me know for sure. And uh, thanks again for watching. Hey, have fun with the grid. The grid is is amazing. Uh, I think it's one of the most powerful sound design tools out there, not just because it's so powerful, because it's not the most powerful thing out there, but I think it is the most accessible for what the, 
the power is that gives you. And I find myself using it for just about a, certainly a majority of my sound design stuff nowadays. So if you're not into it, I think it's worth to to learn it um, so that you can have some fun with your music. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Bye.